เกาเลยจะไปกระตุ้งอีกแล้วคนเชื่อกันแล้วก็เห็นนะสมสิสุภูเชี่ยวเอกก็ใช่เป็นแนวเดียวกับพระพิธีนั่น Hey everyone, astronaut Ani here, talking about For All Mankind season three. In season three of the show, the Mars 94 mission from Russia has to be cut short because of propulsion system issues and rescued by the American Sojourner One. While this vehicle was very unique in its design, we never actually got to see it land. So I decided I'd do a mission recreation here. Now the propulsion system for this is very unique. It is a nuclear biprop. Now, what does that mean? It uses nuclear propulsion with bipropellant propulsion supplementing the nuclear propulsion, because nuclear thermal engines are very, very, very heavy. Like they have a thrust-to-weight ratio of maybe three. For this vehicle, I just very carefully designed it so that way I would have a big engine providing the majority of thrust and nuclear providing supplemental, which worked out very well. However, prototypes have to be made. This was one of the prototypes I made. It turned out pretty decently, so I decided, where can I send this prototype to test out various functions, such as the fuel regeneration capabilities and the landing gear? Then it hit me: I can send it directly to the Moon, and in for all mankind, Russia owns basically half the Moon, so it would make sense. And plus, they'd probably be able to use this for like drilling operations on the Moon. But upon landing, land your fingers on that like, subscribe, and bell notification button if you want to see more of this awesome stuff that I make. Having fully landed, we uh, deploy the radiators and extra drills to begin mining fuel over the course of a couple months. Having fully fueled ourselves up, we head back to the Moon's orbit and then head all the way back to Kerbin's orbit. Where the Mars 94 mission is waiting ever so patiently for us to refill them. You want to fill all the fuel tanks up as best as you can. Make sure you press the nine key to turn off uh, the bipropellant engines on this vehicle because you are going to need the bipropellant for landing on Duna. All nuclear engines will be used for transfers and orbital insertions only. That is a very important thing to know. So having fully fueled this thing up, we line ourselves up for a Duna transfer window by looking directly from Kerbin to the Sun to Duna and making sure it's a 45 degree angle. Having done all that, we then finish up with our nuclear powered burn, hopefully not melting the engines out of their sockets like they did in the show, and then we just coast right out of Kerbin's sphere of influence and right into the Moon's sphere of influence. And coast right out of that too.、And、then we travel through the interstellar gases and solar winds that make up our solar system, right towards the red shores of Duna. For this vehicle, you're probably going to want to do arrow passes with the vehicle. It's probably what they would have done in the show, based on how little time it took for them to burn out their nuclear engines. Just because they want to keep the nuclear engines in as best condition as possible, so you want to aim either radial in or radial out, and you can get a lot of surface area hitting the atmosphere to slow you down. Eventually, you'll start leaning backwards, and then you can begin start doing your descent. One of the cool things about the way I designed this is it has these little habitation modules borrowed from the show's design. That when you're at an altitude of maybe two to three kilometers, you can actually separate them, and they'll land maybe 50 meters to 150 meters away from where you're attempting to land the main vehicle. And like I said, make sure you use the bipropellant mode on this system. It is a very important detail, and make sure you're aiming for a roughly flat landing site. And if you're using Parallax 2 mod, God help you. You will be praying, crying, and wetting your pants while trying to land this thing. If you have Parallax 2, because finding a flat landing site without rocks is horrifying. But here I go. 
I actually managed to do this somehow on my first try. I don't know how, but I managed to land it upright, and I was able to deploy the solar panels and radiators, so that way I could just wait till the morning the next day, retract the solar panels, but somehow forget to retract the radiators, and have this young cosmonaut Kerbal come crashing down on the radiators, breaking them. Make sure you bring a lot of repair kits. I've already stacked this thing full of repair kits as best as I can. It's basically pre-kitted out for you, so you won't have to worry about that too much. And as you know, all ships will be on Kerbal X. Have your cosmonaut walk over to the habitat, put on the porch, climb inside, go to sleep for a while, and then have them check on make sure everything's fixed and repaired, and have your engineer cosmonauts stay inside the ship to help refuel the vehicle for the trip back home. If you are enjoying this video, please like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below. I try to release a new video every other week for your viewing pleasure. I am the astronaut. Let's fly.